said, I think I want to get an IUL policy instead of term. I said, no, you don't. So the only people who make money on IULs is the people that sell. It's like communism. Uh, you can make it sound really nice. Um, and IULs, you make that sound good. Uh, what the aftermath that you get it looks like is two different things. All life insurance is annual renewable term insurance. Anytime you hear of universal life, variable life, um, all that insurance is is is, is in renewable term, and they're adding a, an investment part to it. How, how I show a client how it works, okay? Well, first of all, if you ever have the access, have access to you get the best thing to ever do. If you have a client that already has one of these, say, can I take your policy? And analyze it and bring it back to you. How many people ever read, read their life insurance policy? So no one reads their policies, even that the policy of the contract. Okay. So it behoove you. But but how most people make their decisions, or how, how people most people understand what they have, is the little stuff that goes with the little statements they give you, or little print offs and all this other stuff that goes with the policy, right? So that's what they use as their information. But I always point it out to my clients. That the reason this is not stable to your contract is this is not the same as your contract. Except for a couple times, I did have a couple, I did see a couple of agents staple those things to the client's policies. So how it works is, is I always draw a little picture of pipeline, okay? And so the way it works is, let's say your client is buying a life insurance policy for $100 a month, a universal life policy. So the hundred dollars goes into this pipeline. There's a couple leaks, but most of the money makes it to the bucket, the savings bucket, okay? Where they say they're going to make eight percent or six percent or whatever return they're going to get. They say they're going to get, it. and they do get it. Whatever money gets in this bucket does get that thing finished, right? Okay. But what happens is, is every month they they, they dip out what it, the risk of you dying is, cost of what it costs to pay for your risk of dying. Mortality cost. They have a little dipper here, and they dip that out of the bucket to cover the cost. At first, more money make is in is going into the a lot more money is going into the bucket than what they're dipping out. Okay, but then what happens? And every so year, the dipper is the annual renewal. It's annual renewal insurance. Okay. It's the mortality cost. Okay. And every year, this dipper is getting bigger and bigger. Okay, and eventually. Dipper will be so big that this bucket will run out of money. So when the bucket runs out of money, you'll get a letter from the insurance, and they'll say one or two things. Uh, you now, and, and you got to realize most of the time you've already had this thing 10, 15, 20 years, 25 years, whatever. You've had a long time. Your health may not be what it was when you started, right? 10, 15, 20 years down the road. So they send you a letter and say, you know what, this hundred dollars isn't, isn't enough anymore. So now you need to set us two hundred fifty dollars to keep this policy in force. Okay. So now you've been paying up for so long. It's kind of like extortion. Mm -hmm. uh, you feel like you're in so far that you have no choice but to pay the two fifty, right? And the reason the dipper gets bigger is the uh, it's the interim renewal term. Remember? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes. So that's I run for a bit. So do y'all follow me on that? Yeah. Okay. So this yes yeah, every year the way annual. You know, if you're, how are you, 40? One. 41. Okay. So 41, okay. And then when you're 42, you're that much closer to the Grim Reaper, right? Yeah. So every year we get close. So. Happy birthday. <laughs> so every year, as we get older, we're getting closer to the Grim Reaper. So and the risk, our risk of dying increases, right? So they have to charge more because now the odds of you dying are increasing, right? So the cost has to go up, okay? And theoretically, at 100, you're supposed to be gone at that point, right? You're living a borrowed time. But now they're right, underwriting costs for 100 feet at 80 120. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the leaks, those are fees. They're, they're, they're what? The small leaks are, there's a policy fee that's like $7,500 a year. Uh, there's a couple of little administrative costs that come out, but most of the hundred dollars makes the bucket. Maybe ninety dollars or ninety-five dollars of the hundred dollars makes it to the bucket.
and, and so and then you do get whatever the investment vehicle is the bucket and they switch out and, and so if it's a if it's a, a, a st- the old universal life the standard universal life insurance then it's whatever interest rate they say you're going to earn in there. If it's, it's an IUL, index universal life, then if you, an index universal life policy, the money goes to the company or uh, Western Reserve Life or whoever the insurer is. They actually take the money. The money is invested in a index that they own. And then they give you a part of, of the return from that index. You don't actually own that investment at all. So you think you do, mm-hmm. but you don't. Because if you did, the person that sold it would have to be have a securities license. If I sell you an investment, or I get you to put your money in an investment that has money in the stock market, or invest in stocks, bonds, bonds, whatever, I have to have a securities license to sell that. Okay. So how they get around that? It, how the insurance company get around that and the companies that sell. There's a, that, a product that we offer, our product's called Index Universal Annuities. That's right, right? Index Annuities. Index, 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 index Annuities. Annuities. Or the exact same one. And agents that don't have securities license can sell them. Um, and it looks like the client is investing in something that is mirroring the S&P 500. The problem with it is, though, is nearly all of them have what's called a cap. Okay, a cap rate. So, like this year, the S and P will probably do fourteen percent. So most of them, most IULs and most index annuities will have a cap rate somewhere around eight percent. So the maximum you can make, no matter how well the market does, is eight. So, and if you if y'all have seen the the ICA guy, how often does the market make more than eight percent? Well, not every year, well, but there's lots of years, some years it does, but when it does, yeah, 7 out of 10 is probably real close at the time, and it's not just 8, or just, it's, it's it can be way up, okay, it can be 30%, right? Now, the down, the good part of it is you're also got to guarantee that you can't make less than, or you can't go down a day. Even if the market goes down to 20%, you can't lose money, okay? But... But so what happens is, so that's what this this product would be inside this bucket if that's if you got a universal index universal block. Okay. So anyway, as they dip out, they'll come in t- until they get a letter saying, "Hey, send us two fifty, keep the policy in force, or we'll lapse the policy." Now there's another product called VUL variable universal life, and that one you actually are you have to have a security license to sell. Okay. Or variable products license to sell, and that that means that does have like huge funds in it. Okay, so you you can invest your return can be as high as the index or make twelve percent or whatever. Okay, but the downside with that one is is the insurer bears all the risk. They're still dipping out every year, right? Cover the risk of dying. So when's the worst time to sell? When it's down, right? Like last year, the market was down. 22% last year, some percent, pretty, pretty heavy percent. If you own a product like this, and they were they were still dipping money out of your bucket when it was down, right? So you're dipping at the worst possible time. They're dipping now. This is why this, the, the same principle here is why the, the Jordan pension program is in the bad shape as it is. It still hasn't recovered since 2008. Okay. So, but so they're they're selling it at the wrong cost of time. So if this goes, if the money, if you have twenty grand in here, and it goes down to zero, then they lapse policy. Okay, and a lot of times the premiums are really high on the product. They're not about hundred. They're probably most of them way more than hundred dollars a month. All of these, when the bucket runs out of money, is when you're going to get a letter. The bucket goes dry. You no longer have coverage, even though you paid every premium on time. And if you had a loan on the policy, okay. So let's say you had uh, like this. Let's say you you have a, a million dollar policy, and you did dump in two hundred grand in the policy, uh, and then you decided you were going to take a hundred out, and you passed away. Your family would only get nine hundred thousand. When you do take 
the hundred grand out as a loan, they charge you interest on this. They're telling you it's your money, but it's your, your own money you're paying interest on. Right? And the point is also, if you put two hundred grand in a million dollar policy, you're really only insured for eight hundred thousand. Your two hundred grand is going to the rest of it, right? Uh-huh. What what I'm showing you right here is how universal a variable life works and any kind of universal life works. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's a different animal than whole life. Whole life, believe it or not, is actually better than this stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's but, it's, but that's like saying um, uh, prostate cancer is better than pancreatic cancer. Okay. Yeah. It's better. <laughs> I don't know how it's better, but it's better. That's a good <laughs> And some of these pick over on the other, but yeah. even then, it's not a good decision. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it's, and I'll show you, you'll see why. We're going to run through the numbers of why this is really a hideous product. And they've been, re- and here's the other thing that drives me nuts. Uh, they've been writing books about how evil these policies have been since the 1800s. So. Right. Tell people not to buy these things. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, my dad, my father in law, I remember he had a pile of books in his office one day, and he had a book written in the 50s called The Mortality Merchants. And that's what this book is about. Telling people how, why they should not buy life insurance that has a savings program attached to it. But the industry, that, and, okay, why is it then, okay, here's the, here's the other. When I sit down with a client and I explain to them about how their universal life policy or their whole life policy and all this other stuff works, their first statement to me is, they'll say, especially when they start to really understand it, they'll say, well, how is this legal? If it's such a ripoff, why is it legal? Well, you got to realize most of the insurance commissioners in every state are old whole life agents. They're the guys that sold them stuff. So they're not going to tell you it's evil when they've been selling for 40 years, 30 years. And it's very profitable. It's a $7 trillion industry. It's a huge industry. And they have, they have really great um, lobbyists. They have great lobbyists. There's a guy named Senator Metzenbaum, Indiana. Uh, he had Senator he had set an investigations on universal life in the early nineties. And the reason he had investigations on them is he had one. And he realized how bad it really was. So he said so he, he had a, he had a set of investigation like in ninety ninety something. And then uh, he said, "This is it's nothing but a show game. Uh, at the end, that you're left with no money, which everything he said was true. But then, and like a year or two later, he he requested that if there's any insurance company that disagreed with what he was saying, to come speak. No one showed up. No one come. He even what's what's it called when you request them to be there? He subpoenaed some of them, and they still didn't show up." Here's how the whole whole life works. Let's say you're 30. They think you're going to be dead at 100, right? <clears throat> so the selling point of whole life insurance are for most human beings. Most human beings, especially if you grow up in the class, is the thing you hate the most is change. So you'll avoid anything to avoid change. Okay. So... So what's great about this, if I say you a whole lot, I say, oh, you're 30 years old, okay, <clears throat> you just had your first baby, you had some babies, you're married, you got mortgages, you got all this stuff going on, so this insurance agent comes to your husband and says, you know what, you need to go life insurance policy. So, and he says, here, I'll sell you this $100,000 policy for $100 a month. The great thing about it is your premiums will never go up which is music to your ears. From 30 to 100, what's going to happen is you're going to be start, I'm going to, you're going to have a forced savings plan. Okay. You're going to get to save money while you're buying this life insurance. Okay. So you say, okay, that's not like a good deal. And so at 30, he buys a policy, $100, $100,000 coverage. At 50 years of age, he's got $20,000 saved up in this policy. Because the agent told him, hey, at 50, you'll be able to take some money out of your policy and send your daughter to college. So, um, so that's what happened. Sure enough, he's got 20 grand in there when he's sick. But, so let's say his daughter comes up to him and says, daddy, daddy, I want to go to college. And he takes the 20 grand out of the policy. 
when he takes the twenty grand out, they subtract that from the hundred thousand. So now he's got eighty thousand dollars of coverage, and they're going to charge him six percent interest minimum on the twenty thousand he borrowed out of the policy. So six percent of twenty thousand is what? Say twelve hundred. Twelve hundred. Which is how much a month? Say hundred. One hundred. Hundred. Yeah. So, so now he's not paying a hundred dollars a month. He's paying two hundred dollars a month. All that does is cover the interest. It doesn't give him back. Right. He's 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 still only going to get eighty thousand. Yeah, he's still only like eighty thousand dollars coverage because he's just barely paying the interest. Okay. So now he's paying. He's paying the interest payment and the regular premium payment. And has less coverage. Yeah, less coverage. Mm -hmm. Does that sound like a deal? Oh, they'll, they'll, they'll put it in the letter that he's paid three hundred a month, three fifty yeah, or whatever. Double. But what the problem paying. with most people, they don't have it, right? Most people live. Mm -hmm. Most people live paycheck to paycheck, right? So even this hundred dollar increase is a stretch for some people, right? That's for a lot of people, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what they're stuck with, right? And and they don't realize. And, and well, the rest of the story is. When he did this, they did explain to him that he only had eighty thousand dollars coverage. He still only thinks he has a hundred. What aren't you supposed to tell him? They get a letter. It's written in. It's in the box. This is written. <laughs> it's written. And you're supposed to read it, and and <laughs> yep. you don't understand it. I took loans off my whole life when I went to college off my own life insurance that I paid for. And uh, I didn't go to college and close in my late twenties. But anyway, it was a small amount because it was a small amount of coverage. But nonetheless, and then I uh, took a loan, but eventually my policy was paid up. But they had trouble. We moved, and somehow we didn't get notice. The one policy was paid up, and the second policy still had a little left over, and they just kept taking the value out of that until eventually I had no insurance. So I just lost the policy in the long run, even though I was paying yeah, that, was, that was another scam I used to see. Okay, so let's talk about how they do this. Okay. How is it they can keep your premiums the same from 30 to age 100? Because your risk of dying is much lower at 30 than it is 100. How can they charge a set rate? Well, basically, they take the, the whole, amount, and the whole amount from 30 to 100, average it together, and you're so so you're paying. Let's say you're so you're paying the hundred off. You're paying part of the hundred age hundred age from the very day you started. Okay, you're paying a higher rate to to not have to go up later. What you're doing, so you're paying it front run. So they're paying this higher rate for eight years, and you'll go somewhere else. They collected that premium. They made a lot of money. So it's 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 a money maker, okay. But then let's say okay, let's say you never let's say you never borrowed money out. Let's say he's sixty five now. He's got fifty thousand dollars saved up in his policy. He never borrowed any money out. So he's got fifty thousand dollars in cash value and a hundred thousand dollars policy. And he died. How much money does his family get? What happens to the fifty? You get your fifty back. Let's say if you're now only buying fifty thousand dollars of insurance. See what's really happening. What's really happening is, even if you have twenty thousand there and fifty, you, if you have twenty thousand and fifty, you're only buying eighty thousand dollars of coverage because your own money is replacing the risk of you dying. So then you're paying less. You're only buying fifty thousand dollars here. So the actual cost of insurance is really going up because you're replacing the risk of you dying with your own money. It's, it's a money maker uh, for these insurance companies. So what we do differently. So this is how a whole lot works, right? For the same hundred dollars a month, the thirty-year-old guy pays thirty dollars a month for at least a hundred thousand dollars coverage, probably two fifty. We get them to invest the seventy dollars a month. They work under the life insurance policy for thirty-five years, from thirty to sixty-five. So get your calculator out. If you take seventy dollars a month and you didn't put in the life insurance policy, but you invested it instead, what would you have? Uh, let's put it in an S&P 500 fund, let's say 12%, 7%, uh, $70 a month at 12% for 35 years. The N is time, the I is interest rate, the P is present value, PMT is payments, FV is future value, CHS is change sign, CLX is clear, and here's your numbers. And remember, this is a reverse Polish notation calculator. Uh, we're doing 70 70 dollars so he's put 70 pmt as payment right the tw the we're interest rate is 12 percent we can go one two whenever we do a monthly calculation we're going to push blue g i and it's for 35 years so 35 blue g n zero pv fv if they took the 70 dollars a month 
and you don't have to find, you don't have to pay the final price you know, to get the money out, right? You actually own it. Instead of paying hundred dollars a month, now you pay thirty dollars a month, and actually you probably buy not more, way more than a hundred thousand dollars coverage. You probably two hundred fifty thousand dollars coverage. And if you take the seventy dollars and then step put life insurance, you invested that money in the same period of time in thirty five years, you'd have way more money than than you had coverage. Okay, so our objective is the only reason you buy life insurance at all is because you don't have any money. Okay, if you had lots of money saved, you wouldn't need life insurance. If you had a million, like if you had a million dollars sitting in an account somewhere, what would you need with life insurance policy? So life insurance is for those that don't have any money; they have the money to cover the risk of their family that passed away. And the purpose of life insurance is to replace loss of income. So the way you want to look at it, this is what we focus on, and this is the theory of increasing responsibility that we teach. So when you're 30, you have high liabilities, okay? Still have high liability, though. <laughs> you, which, what is that? Kids mm-hmm. are liabilities. You got a big mortgage payment, you get big house payments. That's you got with a tractor. Tractor, <laughs> you do. High, high cost, right? And you have low assets. So at this point, you need a loss of life insurance, right? Because the risk is high. You don't have the money to cover the risk, do you? So, but, so, but if you're investing the $70 a month, okay, by the time you're 50, and he's got money in a 401k, and you got stuff, stuff going on, all this, okay? But 20 years later, what's happened? Well, your debts are paid down, your mortgage paid down, your kids kind of get grown, you've got money in your 401k growing, you got money in your other investments growing, so, and then by the time you're 65 or 70, you got high assets and low liabilities. Your house paid off, everything's paid off, right? You got money saved. What do you need life insurance with when you're 65, 70 years old? You don't. So you buy it when you need it and get rid of it as soon as you can. That's where you want to look at life insurance. And then, but sometimes the clients will say, well, well so I'm going to pay all this money into my life, term life policy and not get anything back? And I said, well, you have car insurance, right? Yeah. If you never crashed a car, you were going to collect anything in car insurance? No. You're never going to collect it. You hope you... Here's the deal. You hope you never collect on the life insurance. Right? Same thing with car insurance. Yeah, you hope you don't have to collect on the car insurance. You only get it because you have to protect yourself. There's some case. words, coverage. Yeah. You have the, this this safety of mind or security of mind of coverage that right. you have never used with either one of them. For generations were sold a whole lot of policies. Mm-hmm. Okay. So their grandmother, their great grandmother, their their their, brother, their their parents all had the same crap. Okay. And but and they were sold it for so many years. And it sounded like that was the right way to go, right? So, so when you come along and you say something completely opposite of what they say, it sounds wrong, right? But the agents that sold them all the policies in the past never really explained anything to them. They just put them in. Just put them in. The other thing they did is most of these policies, these whole life policies, are the face amounts aren't high enough to replace the loss of income. Most widows are broke within three or four years because the life insurance is not near enough money to cover the replacement of the income. And so when I sit down with a client, every time I sit down with a client I write a policy on, I run a hypothetical of what we're going to do with the life insurance proceeds if they did happen and how we're going to take it out so that we, there's no guessing. We know exactly what we're going to do with it. So while we're here, we can show our where to get the photos. Yeah. Okay, so we'll show you how you do close. Okay, so go to see right here where it says turbo apps at the top. Click on that. So go to, go to quotes. quotes. There we are. Okay, quick quote. Quote from for contact Georgia, non tobacco user, female, precision term. Okay, so that's what it wants to be. Since she's 53, we're not going to do a 30 year old. So we're going to do a 20 year policy. Yeah. We'll do uh, 250 pounds. Yeah, what's the premium? Uh, total premium $98.75. Okay, so $100. To so do a 20 year level term policy for her, 53 year old, it's, it's $100. Okay. When you see whatever number this is, 20 year or 30 year, 
that's how long the premium in the face mount will stay the same. Okay. Typically, most term insurance policies are written, the older ones were written for 20 years. Then they went to 25, they went to 30. Now we do 35, a lot of people do 35. Uh, but typically, after that, whatever staying period is, the you know, dad changed, then what will happen? Either the face mount, the state face mount will stay the same, but the premium starts to run up every year. The objective is for you to cancel the policy. You want to be able to cancel the policy because you, if you have the five hundred thousand dollars in your investments, then you don't need the life insurance because of all and you stop paying the premium. If you look at how much more money you're paying for that benefit for that coverage, if you take the difference of what you would be paying for that difference and put it in your investment account instead, you will end up way better than buying a whole lot of policy. That's the thing. You got to separate your savings from insurance. It's when you mix them together that it becomes an issue. Most people can't afford to buy a five hundred thousand whole lot. They can maybe buy a hundred thousand. We should probably do a hypothetical too, so you can see a hundred thousand dollars will produce in any of them. It's it's so yeah. We can do that too. Yeah, because it's not going it's not going to produce a lot of income. Yeah, a hundred thousand dollars is done. Uh, and it costs ten thousand dollars very simple nowadays, at least. But now you got ninety grand. Okay, and ninety grand produces if you take whatever number you have. Take five percent of that. Five percent of ninety grand is forty five hundred. So you can basically take four hundred dollars a month off the ninety grand and make a class. Most people can't do it for a month. So that's why they get a million dollars of coverage. Because if you have a million dollars invested, you take five percent of that, which is fifty thousand a year, which is four thousand dollars a month. Most people live pretty pretty decent on four thousand a month. And so, but if whole life is so expensive. Then it would cost that most people could afford can't afford to buy the million dollars of and whole life insurance, but they can afford to buy a million dollars a term. People uh, are visual learners. Right. They, if you draw a picture, they can understand it. But when you're talking to people, when you teach somebody something, you have to think of all. You have to explain all the pieces. So that twenty thousand dollars of cash value, uh, they borrow that twenty thousand now. They're going to be charged around six percent interest rate. So you have to say that. So six percent of twenty thousand is what? Say like twelve hundred. <laughs> so you twelve hundred. Okay. So you ask that because people don't like to be told things. You have to get in the habit of asking questions. And so if you ask them a question and you make them do the math, then they're focused on what you're telling them. If you don't have them to do the math, and you do it. And a lot of people aren't good with math, so that's why I always ask the question, I'll wait a minute, and then I'll answer it. And if you divide that by 12, when you get 100, so now you're not paying 100 money, you're paying 200 dollars a month. And you know, if we subtract the cash, the loan amount from the, what the face amount was, we get what? If you say 100,000 minus 20, you get what? Eight. Eight. So you that's what you want to do. You, you want to add, you know, when people do the math, it's real to them. If somebody does the math for you and you just give them the answers, it's not as real. When they say out of their own mouth, it means more to them <laughs> than if you say it. You, your, fam, your family gets the 50, but you're only buying 50,000 on the cover right now. You're not buying 100,000 anymore. See, that's... that's because it... it you're slowly replacing your own life insurance with your own money. Oh wow, you can take your own money out and not pay any tax. You, you can take money out and pay no tax. Well, of course you don't pay any tax because you're paying the tax for the money. So that's where they kind of get in the weeds is that you don't, Uncle Sam is never going to get away, get you, let you get away from not paying tax. The question is, what questions do you have? What questions do you have? What questions do you have? Because then it forces them to think of a question. Well, first of all, if you made money on the money, if you'd put fifty thousand dollars in there, and the cash value was worth now sixty thousand, you would pay tax on the ten thousand dollar difference, right. right? The other problem with life insurance is it does not keep up with time value of money. That's true. Okay, that's why I've come across several policies over going where the face of it was like three or five thousand dollars, but they're written in the sixties and seventies. Okay. That's another problem with life insurance, especially any kind of life insurance, whole life, or whatever, is 
is it does not that hundred grand. They have probably written the 60s and 70s for three to five thousand dollars because that was the annual income right. of most people was three to five thousand a year. Right. So if if grandma buys if we buy a policy in 35 years from now, we're 65, 75, 80 years old, that hundred grand is more like 30 grand or 20 grand. So that's why you have you have to have your money outside of the insurance invested because that's the only place where you're going to make 8% or more any money than inflation. Keep up inflation taxes. Yeah. Okay, Colonial Penn, that's how that works. <laughs> Is the first two to three years you pay the premiums in, if you were to pass away, they just refund your premiums. Yeah. But past that, then you're covered for, and they, so $9.90 per unit? Per unit. Okay, now. What's a unit? What's a unit? In <laughs> their terms, it's $100. <laughs> With us, a unit is a thousand dollars, but with them, it's a hundred dollars. So it sounds like a deal, but it's not. And you got to realize they're they're running these ads on TV all the time. Mm -hmm. These ads are not cheap, mm -hmm. okay, and they're still making profit. Yeah. Okay. Roof light is by far again okay, same thing. It's deceptive as well mm -hmm. because it appears to be cheaper. A lot of people think. Wow, if I buy my life insurance for a job, it's probably cheaper that way than I thought it would be the policy. It's not. Okay, so let's talk about why. It's, well, it's not if you're healthy. Okay, I've had some cases of mine where I had a client that could not qualify for life insurance. With me. And I would ask if you had access to a group life insurance at work. Yes. I said, you need to sign up for that. Okay, because if, they don't do any medical exam with you. Well, that, okay, well, that's good for that person, but somebody that's healthy, that means you're paying for that person. Mm -hmm. You're in that group, right? So if you're healthy, it's by far the cheapest way to buy individual policy. Also, with like Josh's program, most group life insurance is either five-year renewal or annual renewal, where you pay a little bit. The, why, why it's a little deceptive, is you, let's say you buy a $50,000 policy for your job. They're taking out your paycheck. It's like $2 per week, right? So when you look at it, $2 a week, it's like, well, that's cheap. $2 a week, though, right? But the problem you don't see is, number one, you're only covered for 50000 Number two, that's $2 a week this year, okay? Next year, it's two fifty. The year after that's three of And you don't notice it, it's still three dollars it's cheap, right? So. And you'll realize, really, if you're paying a lot more money for that insurance than you uh, realize.